Hi, this is Charlie Montotiella from BluebearFlutes.com. Uh, just making a video for you, those of you who like to make all these many different types of flute totems, what we're going to be making today is an orca totem. And an orca, I guess, uh, killer whale is another thing we call them. Uh, not only is it a, like a, kind of a general name for a whole species, uh, or even for a look for that matter, uh, but it's also, in some countries, and some languages, a specific name for the killer whale. So, we're going to make one of those, and to do so, all you got to do is print out a picture uh, from our website, from the Orca Totem little download we have there. And once you print it out, pick out which one that you want to carve out, and then get you a piece of carbon paper. Pretty simple to find carbon paper. You might even find a spare one in the back of an old checkbook. As a kid, that's what I used to do, is grab those. But, uh, let's see. Then find yourself a nice looking piece of wood that you want to use to make your totem. And once you pick out what your wood is going to look like, decide where on the wood you want this little guy to be swimming. Because with this piece of red cedar, you have such a beautiful coloration difference between the white and the red. I can't help but feel like that's going to make a really neat looking uh, orca here. And uh, I think I'll use that middle one for a standard size flute. And we'll carve him out. So come focus over here on top of it and take a look. Okay, so like I said, I've decided to go in this halfway point here. I'm just going to lay my carbon paper down and kind of eyeball it and see if that's where I want it to be. I think so. Make sure you have the correct piece of carbon paper facing down. Usually it's kind of white on the back side and gray or black on the front side. You can get blue carbon paper. This is my old Orca printout here. So you'll see a piece of his tail poking up there that you won't see on the one from our website. And once again, my favorite a phrase to use is this ain't rocket science so if you're coloring outside of a line it's okay I like to go and pick back up on the back side to give it a little bit more individuality let's take a look yeah that looks great so let's go ahead and see if we're at a good place here to cut him out now if you don't have a tool like this at home, please don't think you need to rush out and go get one. I can carve this out with a drill press, with a pocket knife, or whatever. Uh, you could carve it out with a rock if you had to. And if you don't believe me, look at some of the beautiful, beautiful carvings that people have made. Uh, not just from Native American world, but uh, from all over the world. People have made carvings for a long, long time with uh, just the simplest stone tools. So let's start doing that. Okay, so I've got a really coarse 80 grit belt on here, um, and my little orc is a little bit wider than what he really needs to be. It needs to be about to here, I think. I'm going to take that off. Um, also, looking at the color, I wanted to make sure that I got the color exactly where I wanted. And also looking at him, I think, hey, you know, he might would have made a good shark, too. I think I've had one request for a shark uh, totem, however, uh, not as common these days as it may have been a couple thousand years ago. So I've got to round this off first, and then I'm going to flatten the other side so I can get more of the white mixed in with that red.
Okay, so here's a start, and uh, it's actually closer to the width that I'm going to end up with here. And uh, also, most importantly, I wanted to let you know that going back on my earlier statement of you don't have to have these tools to do this job, you can actually, you know, create this with paper. You could create this with clay, with um, polymers, with epoxies, with um, thick pieces of wood laminate would actually look pretty nice too. And all you would do is print out different sizes and put them together um, and form, you know, basically as you go and then go back and do a little sanding or whatever you need to do in the meantime. Uh, the next step for us is something that I'm going to do on the sander and then the rest of it's going to be with the rotary tool. Uh, the uh, sander I'm going to sand his face a little bit. Orcas and most uh, whale-like animals have notoriously large faces because they have a big you know skull in there. Uh, their heads actually quite big so that's important and uh, we'll leave that part of his body a little fatter than the back side which is where all the action takes place. And the rest of it is just dremeling. I think that's a word now isn't it? And uh, using my rotary tool here. Keep in mind that his... Oh. <laughs> Realism in the shop. Keep in mind that his fin goes inside of his body a little bit. Right about, let's see. Right about there. Okay, so that part will do hand sanding from now on. The uh, bottom fin here is actually two, and we're just going to go ahead and split those guys right here. And then the back of this particular sea animal, his tail also has a small split in it. And I'm sure at home some of you are oceanographers thinking, well, doesn't he know the rhyme? A fish with a single tail is not a fish at all, it's a whale. I just made that up. And then don't forget, like I said, it's thinner back here where the action takes place. Of course, not only is it action because we have to do more dremeling, but it's also because uh, the tail of this animal propels him through the water, which is what makes him go fast. The faster it is, the more sleek it needs to be, the more muscle and the more uh, developed. And because I like to cheat, I'm going to go ahead and use my rotary tool here to round these edges off a little bit. Truth be known, if I wasn't making a thousand of these at a time, I could probably make this with a rotary tool here. Or with a carving knife of some sort. Out of the same material. Okay, so let's go ahead and take some fresh piece of hand sandpaper to this and okay, see what so what we did, basically cut out a little um, square design of uh, an orca here, and then we sanded some key areas, like his head is a very noticeable one, the uh, top fin here, the uh, waistline back here on the little guy before he gets to his tail, and under his belly. Now it's just basically hand sanding. You know, you probably could form this entire thing with just a piece of sandpaper and without any tools. This is a piece of 150 that I'm using, which is, when I was a kid, I thought 150 was a good fine sandpaper. And really, I mean, it is fine still, but uh, with our flutes, we always finish them off with 400. 
some people use 600. And I've had people that have had other flutes that liked ours and said, oh, did you finish this with 600? I'm like, nope, oh, it's 400. So we've got some good shaping going on here. Let's do his fin. So that's his head. Some large, um, let's see, I don't know if I could call them, I guess sea dwelling animals, that's how I should put it, um, have a fin in the middle of their body, and some of them have kind of, or at least it looks like they have, a large connecting area on that fin that goes around most of their body. So how you shape this guy here may determine whether it looks more like a species of whale or dolphin or shark rather and of course how you shape it also determines if it looks more like this or like that if you want a real neolithic shaped orca you can leave him kind of square if you like or make one part of his body usually his head bigger than everything else we're almost done here with this guy a little bit more work on his tail I think will help a little sanding under his belly scrape those nasty barnacles off of his underside at home laughing thinking, what is wrong with this guy? There's no barnacles, this is a piece of wood. We're getting really close here. So close. Gonna round off some of these more drastically shaping areas. In nature, most everything is a round, smooth type of shape, not square and right angles. So, round some of this stuff off. Okay, that's a good start there. I'm going to unfold my paper just a wee bit. I'm going to keep moving positions, but when it comes to sanding or shaping, you've got to do what is comfortable. Toss down the coarse paper and pick up some 220. A lot of times I'll use the uh, totems that we make in a video to go out on an order. Sometimes I uh, will make one of these flute totem videos in the midst of needing to make a flute for an order. And I'll just go ahead and use the totem from the video for the orders totem. But this time I think I'm going to keep this one. <laughs> I don't have one of these and they're really cool looking. They are one of our most requested totems along with the others. We try to do them in order. You know, our bear totem is probably the most requested one. And then we have a lot of people requesting wolves and, and crows. I think the next totem we're going to make is going to be an eagle. Which would be pretty cool. Of course, we get requests for Sasquatches. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> So, I think we've made a chihuahua, made a bunch of horses, I guess. That's another good one we should probably make. And I think I'm done here. Just wanted to go back and make sure I sanded fine all these rough areas that the 150 was on. And there you go. Now this isn't the final stage, this is actually uh, the stage right before he goes on the flute. And I'll show you how we fix this on the flute and that'll be it. But a, kind of a neat little guy. I'm happy with him. 
his colors will show up a lot better once we oil him. Okay, so the question is, how do you get this on top of this? Very, very simple. Uh, you need to drill a hole in it. <laughs> very easy to do. Lay him down here on my operating table. You don't want to drill the hole all the way through. It's moving sideways just a little bit. You don't need to drill too deep either. That's probably far enough on that part. And then a little hole directly in the center of this guy. Let's see what we've got here. Here's my little plug I like to use. And then we'll just put this on there. That look good. Pretty centered, I guess. Pretty good that way. Sometimes I make these guys go down at kind of an angle or come up at kind of an angle. I think I want to leave this one, if I'm going to keep it, I'm going to leave him kind of straight across. And then the neat thing is, once you uh, tie your leather lace around the flute and around this block, uh, it'll hide the block for the most part. And imagine if you use some blue leather lace, that would look really cool with it. But <laughs> be like he's jumping out of the ocean. But anyway, it would give you kind of an idea. And uh, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Very simple to carve out a little orca totem or anything else like that. You may be using this orca totem making video for some other purposes, like if you just need to keep a little orca in your pocket. You know, can't have too many of those. How many people do you know have an orca in their pocket? Nobody. So you might be the first one. Um, something to keep in mind if you were to uh, use this guy in a rough environment like say in your pocket you would want to make sure that the tail was thicker when we are building these totems one thing we take into consideration is their durability and uh, that's where our old horse totem that we used to make in my opinion wasn't as stable because horses have such thin little legs but uh, he wasn't as stable as our running horse that we have these days because he has much larger legs, but they're uh, very nice looking. So, uh, you know, we make these changes to these totems so that they can become very usable and, and strong and durable and do what they need to do. But still, as with anything, kind of have to take your time with it. I'll go ahead and oil and wax it, and uh, you guys can take a look and see how you like it. And... Uh, the image will, of course, be posted at the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or want to have an orca totem on your flute when you order one from us, just send us a little message. Order the custom totem um, and uh, send us a little message that you want the orca version. Uh, otherwise, you know, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and we, as always, will look forward to seeing you again very soon. So once again, Charlie Montatuyella from BlueBearFlutes.com signing out. You guys, happy flute making.